Hello guys, this is Dr. Asif. Today I'm going to make a new video regarding the torso trauma. Um, after a few days ago, I have started a previous video regarding the neck and spine that you have already seen in my YouTube channel. So uh, for these some kind of situations, uh, I didn't make the forward videos. But uh, now I will try to continue the video weekly in two. So uh, for the continuation of that lectures, the today's lecture is a torso trauma. So the belly lap 27th editions, that is 27th chapters, and the 27th edition is the lucky numbers because this is the edition number of the belly lap 27th edition. And today I'm going to discuss about the chapter 27 that is torso trauma torso means the trunk and the abdomen so the injuries are composed of the trunk and abdomen is regarded as a torso trauma okay so any kind of injury that may affect the trunk and abdomen uh, will be regarded as a single term that is torso trauma so these are the learning objectives uh, from these chapters because today we will going to learn that the management of the trauma based on the physiology so physiological basis so we will discuss about the management of the trauma along with the basis of physiology as well as the anatomy in as in general surgery the cross and surgical anatomy of the chest and abdomen pathophysiology of the torso injury how the injury occurs, the strength and weakness of clinical assessment, the injured patient, and the use of special investigations and their limitations, operative approaches of the thoracic cavity. So, what kind of operations that we can uh, make or we can make through the thoracic cavity, and the special features of an emergency room thoracotomy indications for the techniques of the trauma laparotomy and the uh, philosophy of damage control surgery already we knew something about the damage control surgery in, in our previous lecture but here we will try to learn something more about the damage control surgery so how we can make the surgery to, to prevent the further damage of the tissue or the organs as well as the life so let's start first the introductions i already uh, reviewed these lectures is a huge lecture huge topic so i did manage to uh, i did manage these okay pardon me so i did manage uh, to make this chapter in short because so uh, that's why um, i made this okay here you can see the uh, introduction so first the introduction so from these topic the most important parts is the the torso is generally regarded as the main part of the human body that i already said primarily made up of the chest abdomen and the pelvis not including the head neck and the arms and legs i already told you that the torso means from the chest abdomen along with the trunk it's called the torso torso comes from the trunk okay about 42 percent all death of the rest of the brain injuries but some 39 percent of all trauma deaths are caused by the major hemorrhage from torso injury. so what is the main things of uh, uh, the most important injuries of the torso trauma that is the hemorrhage hemorrhage is the main problem Although initially injury was treated anatomically basis, okay, let's see the uh, pictogram. So here you can see the incidence of torso trauma. Some CNS injuries of 42%, unknown other four, and the uh, bleeding, 
that is bleeding is the uh, most indicated part and the head injury is the most indicated part of the death due to trauma okay because here the 39 percent bleeding and the bleeding plus cns damage is six percent and cns itself are affected with uh, 42 percent at least okay now the injury mechanism associated with thoughts what are the injuries because young, uh, often injury often trans traverses different anatomical zone of the body affecting the structures on both sides of traditional anatomical zones because there are some three important zone that is divided anatomically where the trauma most probably occurs and the danger level of those zones are uh, divided with the different anatomical aspects here the between the neck and thorax between the thorax and abdomen so that the key junctional zones are the between the neck and thorax between the thorax and the abdomen and the between the abdomen pelvic structures and the groin so these are the weak points okay so the weak point of the junctional zones where the trauma most uh, commonly make the damages okay now the uh, root of the neck the most injuries affecting the base of the neck also affect the upper mediastinum and thoracic inlet that is this region this is the thoracic inlet where so uh, the neck is complete and the torso that is trunk is start or chest so in between here the neck and thorax here the most common problems is usually the upper mediastinum and the thoracic inlet okay most probably affected so here the uh, the zone overlying the mediastinum with its major vessels and the heart is also extremely high risk area of penetrating on because in the in the heart area if penetrating injuries occurs then heart will be ruptured and the blood will be pumped outside or they come to the medial mediastinum as well as the superior mediastinum also. The diaphragm, uh, diaphragm, sorry, the thorax and abdomen are separated by the diaphragm, which is mainly responsible for the breathing and moves during the breathing between the fourth and eighth interspace. Okay, that is four to eight inches inter uh, rib space is usually moves with respiration. So. The other one are composed of within the abdominal cavity. So some part of the abdominal cavity lies under the rest of the ribs. That is a 9, 10, 11, 12. So these are ribs which placed just behind or uh, lateral to the abdominal cavity. So any penetrating trauma in the lower half of the chest may in therefore have penetrated the diaphragm so it is one of the important problems penetrating injury to the diaphragm and they entered the abdomen injuries in this junctional zone therefore should be investigated so must be investigated both cavities have been penetrated so the thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity must be checked where is the trauma occurs if there is any penetrating injury that must be evaluated as early as possible now the pelvic structures that is the pelvis contains a large plexus of vessels both the venous and arterial should inju injury occurs control of hemorrhage can prove to be exceptionally difficult and may require control of the both arterial flow and venous flow. so the most important dangerous condition of the pelvic injury that is a huge hemorrhage so uh, we must evaluate either there is an arterial or venous or both so we must evaluate this okay now the junctional zones i all you have already uh, seen that now the critical physiology so from the point of physiological view the bleeding is the major problem okay so uh, the most bleeding usual organ that is the anatomy extent of the abdomen so these three organs uh, that is blunt uh, liver spleen and the kidney so these are the highly vascular organ and they are uh, somehow present in the body with like a floating state 
so if any injury or blow injury or blunt trauma injury occurs then the massive hemorrhage or massive damages to uh, that might cause catastrophe of bleeding from that is from the liver and the second part is the spleen and then the kidney because kidney present on back side and it is in somehow is protected from with the perivascular or perinephric fat perinephric fat as well as some ribs but but liver and the spleen is uh, placed as a floating conditions in that case the blunt trauma uh, if you can see that a huge ascites or somehow like that so uh, there might be a splenic rupture or a rupture of the liver so here uh, some atls principle so how we can resuscitate the patient first that is airway maintaining airway breathing circulation maintaining the circulations disability if they are in a neurological disability like stroke like uh, head injury and then find of uh, paraparesis or paresthesia in that case disability must be limited and the environment and exposure okay so we must take the patient from the uh, environment of accident to the hospital or the nearest dry zone okay now the although obvious injury may be present additional indication like uh, what the indication we will see the patient's condition or measuring the severity that is bleeding uh, on one floor and four more that is the floor chest abdomen pelvis and extremities so these are organs must be checked gradually or step by step now the thoracic injury thoracic injury again 25 percent of all severe injuries in a further and 80 percent of patient chest injury may manage non-operatively so this is a statement we must remember for the exams that is 80 percent injuries are managed conservatively because there is a limited chances of making any surgery here uh, that's why and if you want to go through the thoracic operation you must need some heart lung operation heart lung machine somehow you need one lung biopsy one lung anesthesia sorry uh, not biopsy anesthesia you need sometimes sometimes you need um, cardiopulmonary bypass mechanism so in some hospitals and some tertiary level uh, reason these mechanisms are not placed everywhere so to save the patient you must take the conservative approach now the critical indicators of potential ongoing bleeding in torso trauma that is physiological increasing respiratory rate if the patient has increasing respiratory rate increasing pulse rate falling blood pressure raising serum lactate and that is called patient is in going to be a shock that is that might be a hemorrhagic shock now the anatomically visible bleeding injury to the close proximity to major vessels penetrating injury in the retained missiles like that is we must check anatomically where the uh, lesion is seen visually that is visible bleeding if there is any visible bleeding uh, injury to the close proximity to the major vessels or the penetrating injury with retained missile now the investigation the now first and foremost easy investigation is ultrasound so we can ultrasound uh, the uh, uh, torso that is e first extended focus assessment of the sonar for trauma is become the most common investigation the technique uses sonar assessment in the chest looking for a cardiac tamponade there may be cardiac because pericardial fluid is seen in the ultrasound so when it is exceeded the normal level that condition is called the pericardial tamponade and the free blood and air in the hemithorax on each side uh, in some case we can see a uh, fluid that might be air or that might be blood so uh, and the assessment of the blood in the abdominal cavity and the paracolic cutters subdiaphragmic spaces and pelvic so that is the dependent positions of the abdomen we can check that positions by doing ultrasound now the underwater seal drainage physiologically grossly unstable patient where the physical examination is inconclusive and there is no time for the logical investigations in such an under 
water chest drainage that is insertion of an um, wa uh, under water chest drainage to can be a diagnostic procedure as well as in therapeutic one and the benefit of insertion of an undue rest that is undue risk here you can see where if there is any chest trauma so you are in confused that uh, maybe there may be a pneumothorax or a tension pneumothorax so in that case try immediately make an chest tube to the triangle of safety so if there is a uh, what, uh, air come out through that or if any blood come through that chest drain so it is confirmed that yes that uh, patient might have fly chest or rib injury or lung injuries or pleural breach in that case that chest drain will save the patient not only diagnose the patient but also save that patient immediately that is your duty so sole responsibility to make a chest drain which is helpful and also it can make a patient's a better new life within a short time now the chest radiograph that is second in important chest uh, chest is a x-ray so penetrating injury might be more helpful for a logic radiograph to be performed patient position erect as this will be best with the small pneumothorax if there is a small pneumothorax fluid uh, meniscus or air fluid level in the presence of free gas under the diaphragm that is sometimes lung abscess or free gas under the diaphragm that is pneumoperitoneum indicate the presence of hollow abdominal viscous perforation we all know that that up to 300 ml of blood may pool behind the dome of the diaphragm and may not be visible even in the erect the presence of thoracic skeletal injury should alert the clinician to be a possibility to adjacent thoracic or abdominal trauma so i already said that that is if there is a rib injury or rib fracture there is a chance of massive bleeding because the rib consists of neurovascular structures that intercostal artery vein and nerve so if the, uh, there is a fracture there also a uh, neurovascular bundle injury that might cause a catastrophe of bleeding so there may be a chance so rupture of the thoracic aorta can be related to the fracture of the first and second rib because first and second rib present in the midline so uh, here the arch of aorta from the behind the manubrium sternum so if there is an injury here there may be a chance of aortic rupture fracture of the rib respectively site can be related to the injury to the lung parenchyma or thoracic wall vasculature causing pneumothorax hemothorax or lung contusions okay the computer tomography scan with contrast allow for the three dimensional constructions of the chest and abdomen as well as the bony skeleton so now the ct ct is the last exam examinations uh, when sonography as well as x-ray is failed in that case or not adequate for the diagnosis in that case we will select CT scan so we can have the three dimensional uh, constriction of the chest and abdomen as well as the bony skeleton it has become the principle of the most reliable examination for major injury in thoracic trauma in the blunt chest trauma the CT scan will allow the definition definition of fracture as well as showing hematomas pneumothorax pulmonary contusion so everything you can be seen through CT Penetrating term of the scan may be showed a track of presence of missile and the proper planning of definitive surgery. So after the CT, you can take uh, adequate planning of surgery, how you can operate that patient. Okay, now the, so here the uh, pitfall of the investigations, that is failure of tracheal shift immediately, deviation of the trachea occurs away from the affected site tension pneumothorax. So, by doing an x-ray we can see the lung segment is collapsed within one side and the hypoechoic area or radiolucent area presence on the whole segment of the lung area so that may be a tension pneumothorax that is track is deviated lung is collapsed in that case ct is the only choice in inflated lung with flood of the hemothorax so auscultation of the front may so there are some physical examination that we can make to assess the stony dial, woody dial, or uh, a resonant, hyper resonant. So these are the things present here. 
so investigation of chest injury in short direct indirect 50% trauma death uh, uh, involved chest injuries 80% can be managed non operatively that is a thoracic 80% of injuries are uh, managed non operatively this is a statement a chest radiography is investing in the first choice a chest drain can be diagnostic as a therapeutic a spiral ct scan provide rapid diagnosis of the chest and abdominal trauma so this is the things we need to uh, remember 50% of trauma and 80% okay now the management no attempt should be made to close the suction drain on until controlled drainage can be achieved in case of stable patient with an open pneumothorax convert to an unstable patient with a tension pneumothorax so if you remove the chest drain uh, before the uh, actual time in that case open pneumothorax can be turned into tension pneumothorax okay so beware about removing the tube in the blunt injury most bleeding occurs intercostal that is internal mammary vessels is relatively rare uh, for these to require surgery so if that bleeding occurs no need to go for a massive surgery if bleeding does not stop spontaneously if doesn't the vessel can be tied off and circle in the blunt chest compressive injury particularly in the presence of a flail chest okay so that may be a flail chest because when flail chest occurs you must understand first flail chest means a single rib needs at least two segment of fractures a single rib needs two fractures in a single rib in that case the most medial portion of the rib fractured rib will will what will act independently okay in that case uh, that piece of bone will injure the in neurovascular bundle Okay, in the patient is extremities with the insanguinating, the chest hemorrhage will be discussed in the emergency department of thoracotomy (EDD) later in the chapter. Okay, now the close management of chest in 80% chest is managed, or uh, that is intercostal drain, that is chest drain is the only management. Do not close a uh, sucking chest wound until a drain is in place. If bleeding persists, the chest will need to be opened and direct hemostatic control is obtained. If there is a massive trauma of the lungs or other vessels, thoracotomy is mandatory. Here, the life-threatening injuries can be remembered as a deadly dozen. So, here are some deadly uh, so twelve important conditions that is a very life-threatening. That is, six are immediately life-threatening and should be sought for the manage during the primary survey and the six are potentially life threatening should be detected during the secondary survey so immediate life threatening injuries the airway obstruction tension pneumothorax uh, it, uh, early intubation is very important particularly in case of neck hematoma or possible airway edema because uh, it is related with the respiration so we must not stop the respiration we must ensure that respiration is restored in that case the airway must not be obstructed so sometimes you need to make a tracheostomy if needed now the te tension pneumothorax tension pneumothorax develops when a one way valve because air only entered but never come out and is accumulated into the pleural cavity in that case lungs will be pushed from the outside from the pleural cavity by the air in that case tension pneumothorax occurs so one way of how the leak throw from the lung or through the chest wall the air sucked into the thoracic cavity without any mean of escape no escape completely collapse then compressing the affected lung okay air will compress the lung and the mediastinum displaced to the opposite side mediastinum will be deviated and the decrease vena is returned because inferior vena cava is also compressed and the compressed is the opposite line. The most common cause of penetrating chest trauma and the blunt chest trauma is the parenteral lung injury. Air leak that did not spontaneously close. Iatrogenic lung injury due to central vena puncture. Okay. And the mechanical posi uh, positive pressure ventilation. Here 
there is will be a hyper resonance that is what are the um, examination findings in that case in case of tension pneumothorax hyper resonance of the breath uh, breath sound vesicular it is normal that is hyper resonant decrease or absent breath sound breath sound will be diminished or absent tension pneumothorax clinical diagnosis treatment should be never be delayed by waiting for radiological conclusions you must see clinically there is no time for uh, radiological outcome or result then you will go for no first you see you will exam examine the patient and you must take decision what you want to do in the most crucial period of time and the treatment consists of immediate decompression initially rapid insertion of large bowl cannula into the second interface space throw here or throw here in the mid clavicular line the affected side followed by insertion of chest tube throw fifth intercostal space of anterior axillary line now the pericardial tamponade it is also uh, an obstructive method because heart is covered with a pericardial fluid when pericardial fluid is increased that extra amount of fluid will compress the heart in that case heart cannot pump so freely so that the not adequate blood is ejected from the uh, heart to the periphery in that case peripheral uh, insufficiency of blood and ultimately cardiogenic shock occurs so this is the pericardial tamponade that is all patient are penetrating injury however near the heart plus shock must be considered to have a cardiac injury until proven otherwise and the central line should be inserted and checking for raising central venous pressure a high index of suspicion and further diagnostic will be there to make the diagnosis first there are not clinically obvious so here you can see a huge space hypoechoic area so lung is collapsed somehow and this is the deadly dozen 12 important life threatening condition immediately after the airway the obstruction tension neuthorax pericardial tamponade open pneumothorax massive hemothorax flyal chest and the potential life injury aortic injury tracheoesophageal injuries myocardial contusion rupture of the diaphragm esophageal injury pulmonary contusions okay so uh, a dry pericardiocentesis proves only that there is a clot on the both end of the needle Pericardiosynthesis has a high potential for iatrogenic injury in the heart and it should at the most be regarded as a disparate temporizing measure in a transport situation that is under ECG control. So you must make pericardiosynthesis under ECG control and it is very much expertise related. So not everyone can do it or not everyone should make the procedure. Okay. So here is a summary of pericardial tamponade, the presentation of similar to the tension pneumothorax, deteriorating cyanosis, tricardial agitation. So uh, in the pericardial tamponade patient, he or she might cause cyanosis, tachycardia and agitations. E fast is diagnostic and may also detect the free fluid in the abdomen and pericardium. The central venous pressure may not be elevated. if the circulating volume is depleted and because of the other injuries pericardial synthesis is a temporizing me measure only with a high complication rate and is not a substitute for immediate operating operative intervention open pneumothorax that is suckling chest on is also called large white bore open more than three centimeter if that occurs and the air accumulating the hemithorax rather than a lung with each inspiration leading to profound hyperventilation on the affected side and hypo hypoxia because lung is collapsed. If there is a valvular effect, increasing amount of air in the pleura will result in tension pneumothorax. First, open pneumothorax occurs, then it turns into a tempo tension pneumothorax because the it is also one way of valve. Air just entered but never come out. That is no escape. Now the massive hemothorax. Hemothorax, I already told you that if the leaf flexure occurs, if there is a trauma up to the neurovascular structures along with the pulmonary vessels of lung or lung injury. In that case, massive hemorrhage occurs, it will also act as a pneumothorax. Okay? So you must read out from this book for uh, uh, 
uh, segments of these things so here this is also here the internal memory and the fracture ribs so this is the most important things here the uh, presentation of the hemorrhagic shock so hemorrhagic shock is the most important problems flat neck veins so there is no pressure on the uh, neck veins not in gourds unilateral absence of breath sound that is lung is collapsed breath sound is not present unilaterally in that that means lung is collapsed on that side initial management to correction have a volumic shock if there is a bleeding or shock then management of the shock is a first priority then uh, the insertion of intercostal drain then chest drain and if the drain contain more than 1500 ml of blood or ongoing hemorrhage more than 200 ml per hour over 3 to 4 hours generally considered indication of thoracotomy if you see that 1500 ml fluid present on the chest drain and that is 200 ml per hour in the 3 to 4 hours and ongoing bleeding so in that case thoracotomy is must so this is the statement you must remember that now they had the management management is like the same 24 uh, french cause or large tip will be drained in sir and the uh, rear pressure will be 5 cm of suction drainage and the clot occlusion of chest drainage tube may result in no drainage even in the presence of ongoing bleeding the second brain drain of the sometimes necessary sometimes you make another drain chest radiograph can help identify the presence of blood if there is any blood then chest uh, radiograph can be seen cardiophrenic or costophrenic and angular consist of some haziness and physiotherapy and active mobilization is uh, also another maneuvers now the flyal chest flyal chest what is it this condition usually results from blunt trauma acid with multiple rib fractures and is defined as three or more refractured in two or more places must be remembered this is very important the blunt force typically also produce underlying pulmonary contusion the diagnosis is made clinically in a patient who are not ventilated to confirm the diagnosis the chest wall can be observed for paradoxical motions that is independently that uh, fractured segment of the ribs will act independently during inspiration and expiration in that case which is regarded here as a paradoxical motion of the chest wall segment now the voluntary splitting of the chest wall occurs as a result of pain mechanically impaired chest wall movement and that's the lung condition all contribute to the hypoxia leading to hypoxia there is a high risk of developing pneumothorax uh, and the uh, CT scan with the contrast to display and the vascular structures 3D uh, chest wall that is CT scan is needed here for uh, which is a gold standard way 3D construct 3D construction of the chest wall now the surgery is to stabilize the flyal segments using internal fixation of ribs so that ribs must be fixed in his normal positions and in for the selected part of groups not all because ribs is uh, surrounded or attached with a, 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 uh, a multiple muscles along, along as well as some ligaments so some particular type of patient it needs to be reconstructed now the third important is the thoracic aortic disruption Traumatic aortic rupture is a common for sudden death after the automobile collisions because sometimes the driver or the steering goes straight through the chest and hit a blunt trauma. In that case, this space is very much dangerous and weak point. Okay, so automobile collision or the fall from high height, the vessel is ready to be fixed distal to the ligament of arteriosum and just distal to the origin of the left subclavian artery here you can see an angiogram film here the pattern here the ligament of arteriosum here it is fixed and when a blunt trauma occurs so this this, this segments 
just adjacent to the right subclavian vessels is very dangerous. Now the widening of the mediastinum. So after that, mediastinum becomes wide because uh, blood is comes through the vessel to the mediastinum. In that case, mediastinum becomes wide. Okay. A depressed left main bronchus. So main brain bronchus will be depressed and the widening of the mediastinum. This is two important condition where the aorta might be ruptured or aneurysm. Sometimes some patients will affected previously with aneurysm. That aneurysm may rupture in that condition after that trauma or accident. In the same things, widened mediastinum and depressed left main bronchus. It is also occurred. Okay. And the aortic disruption should be clinically suspected in patient with gross asymmetry of systolic blood pressure. So systolic blood pressure of that patient will be impaired. And they widen up the pulse uh, pressure and the chest wall contusion. Diagnosis confirmed by the CT. And the mediastinum. The possibility of the tracheosophageal ultrasound. Echocardiography, sorry. Tracheosophageal echocardiography. In unstable patient who cannot be moved to the scanner. Here you can see the initial management consists of control of systolic arterial blood pressure to less than 120. There, after an endovascular intra aortic stent can be placed or tear can be operatively repaired by the direct repair or excision of the grafting using dacron graft. So the dacron graft is used to repair the aortic injury. HSD placed on the affected side will reveal a large air leak and the collapse lung may fail to re-expand bronchoscopy is diagnostic. Trichobronchial injury is sometimes occurs. So this is the system. So chest drain is the key to save a life. Here we can see or we can understand the blunt myocardial injury. Blunt myocardial injury should be suspected in the patient with sustained blunt trauma who develop RD ECG abnormality. Two dimensional echocardiography may be wall motion available. So two dimensional 2D is echo is needed for a wall motion and tachycephalic echocardiogram may be helpful. Okay. There is a little evidence that enzyme estimation have any place in diagnosis. If all the patient myocardial condition diagnosed with a conduction abnormality as a risk of a sudden dysarrhythmia and should be monitored closely. So all the patient of myocardial condition diagnosed with conduction abnormality. So the where if there is a myocardial conduction condition there immediately a conduction abnormality. The heart cannot conduct adequately and sudden dysarrhythmia should be closely monitored. So there might be a possibility of sudden dysarrhythmia. So here the dacron mash, dacron graft. So this is the segment dacron graft is used to uh, reconstruct the construction of the hour. Now the diaphragmatic injury. Any penetrating injury blow fifth intercostal space. Remember fifth intercostal space should rise suspicion of diaphragmatic penetration and therefore injury to the abdominal contact. The diaphragmatic rupture is usually large with herniation of the abdominal content into the chest. So when injury occurs there might be a chances of herniation that is hiatal hernia or many kind of hernia. Foramen of Bogdalek, foramen of Morogagni, uh, then um, hiatal hernia. So there may be a different kind of hernias can occur follow, following the diaphragmatic injuries. Most of injuries are silent. These are usually silent and presenting features are those of injury to the surrounding organs. There is no single standard investigations. Chest radiograph after placement of a nasogastric tube may be helpful. The most accurate evaluation is by video assisted thoracoscopy that is VATS and laparoscopy, the latter offering the advantage of allowing the surgeon to proceed to a repair and additional evaluation of the abdominal organs. The thorax is a negative pressure and the abdomen is positive pressure. So this is the normal things. Thorax is always negative because without negativity, lung will be collapsed. Complication of breath and diaphragm is herniation of the abdominal content into the chest. This may present much later and strangulation of any of the condition can occur high mortality rate. So 
why negative and positive it is maintained when and which is maintained by the diaphragm a complication of breach of the diaphragm herniation of the abdominal content that means the thoracic cavity become positive by rupturing the diaphragm mm -hmm. so there this possibility of strangulation following the changes of the air pressure so, so this changing of the pressure will be affected due to positivity by making the organs become strangulated some organs become strangulated in the, in the positive pressure operative repair recommended okay in all cases if uh, diaphragmatic rupture occurs so operative treatment is must all penetrative diaphragm must be repaired via the abdomen so we will go through the abdominal approach to to reconstruct the injury diaphragmatic injury and not the chest not the chest to rule out the penetrating hollow viscous injuries we will go always through the abdomen to repair the diaphragm not through the chest and it is obvious because you cannot go through the whole diaphragm through the thoracic approach you will never because there is a huge two organs the lungs and the base of the lungs present above the diaphragm so that it, it is not ethical or it is not possible to go through all the locations of diaphragm through the thoracic approach so we need to go through the abdominal approach as well now the esophageal injuries is the another part of the trauma that is it is usually some the penetrating term that is fish bone meat bone or sharp structures might be sometimes make a perforation or injury to the age of vagus and the uh, injury is somehow rare the patient can present in the odynophagia okay pain on the swallowing saliva and food and saliva food and fluid mm -hmm. and subcutaneous and mediastinal uh, emphysema that is mediastinal emphysema that is fluid or air comes to the med mediastinum that is posterior mediastinum as well and the pl uh, pleural effusions air in the perio esophageal space and unexplained fever the mortality rate rises exponentially if the treatment is delayed so we must not delay the esophageal injury treatment it must be uh, as well as as early as possible the treatment is operative repair in defect and drains. Pulmonary contusion occurs more frequently following blunt trauma, usually associated with flail segment of the fractured rib. If that flail segment of the fractured rib affect or injure the lung, in that case pulmonary contusion occurs. It is very common, potentially lethal injury and the major cause of hypoxemia after blunt trauma. Following gunshot on the area of condition from the shock wave of the bullet, and the natural progression of pulmonary condition is worsening hypoxemia for the first 24 to 48 hours. Now, the contrast CT scan can be confirmatory, and a hemoptysis or blood in the endotracheal tube is a sign of pulmonary contusions. Okay, now emergency thoracic surgery. These are the deadly dozens. Now the emergency thoracic surgeries. Immediate thoracotomy is emergency thoracic surgeries. Emergency sternotomy for anterior medicinal structures. Plant thoracotomy for definitive correction of the problem. Now the, uh, the clinical decision as to whether a patient requires urgent surgery or transport to the operating room. It is far better to perform a thoracotomy in the operating room either an antilateral approach of median sternotomy with a good light assistance with a potential auto transcription or bypass because i already told you that to make the thoracotomy or make the thoracic surgery you must need sometimes what a bypass procedure so you must need heart lung machine or cardio pulmonary bypass mechanism so there must be an available cardio bypass cardio pulmonary bypass uh, on the other hand thoracic surgeries are risky now emergency department of thoracotomy that is thoracotomy just read through these uh, for uh, better knowledge but it is not needed right now 
survival rates of thoracotomy patient so it is a statistical analysis more than 60 if blood pressure then survival 60 percent more than 40 percent 40 millimeter mercury so 30 percent survival rate less than 40 that is 3 percent the aim is to emergency thoracic surgery is the internal cardiac message control of hemorrhage from injury of the heart and lung control of the interthoracic hemorrhage from other sources control of massive air leak clamping of the thoracic outer to preserve the blood supply to the heart and brain and cutting off the arterial supply this study in a moribund patient with a major distal penetrating injury now the planned emergency thoracotomy postulateral thoracotomy is not used in the emergency situation because of the difficulties in positioning of the patient except for specific access to certain posterior mediastinal organs now the different approaches of the content of chest cavity how uh, this is the proceed left anterolateral thoracotomy this is the approach in this approach we can see these organs or the <coughs> operation to these organs if we make left anterolateral thoracotomy so we can visualize left lung left hilium uh, thoracic aorta origin of the left supplement artery okay left side of the heart lower esophagus everything we can see from the left side left anterolateral thoracotomy if right anterolateral thoracotomy then right lung ejagus vein superior vena cava intracardiac inferior vena cava upper esophagus thoracic aorta so these are used for mcq exam sometimes part 2x mcq exams is very necessary this chart this table is very necessary median sternotomy if we go from median approach in that case enter aspect of the heart enter mediastinum ascending aorta arch of the aorta pulmonary arteries carrying of the trachea others now the abdominal injury so af, uh, from this part we just finish the thoracic injuries now the abdominal so, so there are many kind of abdominal injuries first let me uh, so i will discuss it in the next lectures about the abdominal injury because torso trauma is divided by two lectures one is about the thoracic injuries another one is the abdominal injury so guys that is it for uh, part one then after that i will discuss about the abdominal injuries and further more to rest of the chapter thank you very much for watching keep subscribing subscribing my channels and like my channels and comment below if you want to know anything about the uh, about our lectures if you don't understand anything you can write on that comment below on the other hand i will try to reply as early as possible so if there is any uh, difficulty to understand the parts so i will say to you go through the books and the uh, and the the places or the line uh, lines i already underlined go through that lines as well as try to understand i try to observe the pictures and the underlying letters that is written here and what messages that chapter wanted to give us we must reveal with multiple time reading so you must go through a multiple time readings as well as you must make discussion with your other colleagues along as your uh, surgical residents along, as well as your students and teachers as well so thank you very much thank you for very much for patience uh, care and keep watching and keep listening the lectures and do better in the exam thank you very much